Ah, Dark Souls. Understanding what is happening can be a little overwhelming. Unless, of course, you've scoured through its environments, dialogue, and many item descriptions. It's a tangled ball of impossibly vague story and cryptic lore. We want to hear your interpretation of the story. But for a look at the big picture, this is Dark Souls in five minutes. Sort of. In the beginning, the world was shrouded in fog and nothing ever really happened. It was ruled by the everlasting dragons, neither alive nor dead, they just were. This was the Age of Ancients. Without explanation, fire simply appeared. The first flame brought with it the idea of disparity. Where everything in the Age of Ancients was neutral and unchanging, now there were contradictory forces in the world. The fire brought heat and cold, light and dark, life and death. Basically, fire shook things up real good. Under the surface of the world, a race of beings came into contact with the fire, and from within the flame, three of these beings found souls of immense power, the Lord Souls. There was Nido, the first of the dead, who claimed the soul of death, the Witch of Isolith and her daughters of Chaos, who claimed the soul of life, and Gwyn, the appropriately named Lord of Sunlight, who claimed the soul of light. A fourth soul, the Dark Soul, was discovered afterwards by the furtive pygmy, the ancestor of mankind, who took it and hid it away, keeping it secret. With these souls, the lords rose up to challenge the everlasting dragons. They fought until one of the dragons, Seath, betrayed his own kind. He revealed to the lords the dragon scales were the source of their immortality. With this knowledge, the lords were able to win the war, ending the Age of Ancients and ushering in the Age of Fire. And things were generally pretty good, for a time. The most important rule of the Dark Souls story is every beginning eventually has to have an end. Every fire that's set will eventually burn out, meaning the fire that kicked off the whole shebang starts to fade. As the fire faded, Gwyn witnessed the dwindling of the light. He feared the growing power of humanity, the descendants of the Dark Soul. He feared the Age of Darkness and the prophesied Dark Lord who would be born among them. So he chose to break the natural progression of things. Rather than let the flame die out, Gwyn sacrificed himself to rekindle it, thus extending his Age of Fire. This took a terrible toll on humanity and likely brought about the Undead Curse. The curse afflicted the dead with the Dark Sign, the burning mark that implies their doom to eventually go hollow, turning into mindless, wandering husks. And that's where you come in. In the original Dark Souls, the cycle is ending again. The fire is dwindling, and you're the chosen undead. You must fight your way through the shriveled husk of Gwyn's kingdom of Lordran, killing hollowed undead, Gwyn's army of knights, and hideous beasts and demons by the score. You also make a quick trip into the past to confront and ultimately defeat Manus, the father of the Abyss, who may or may not be the long-lost furtive pygmy. But more on him later. Anyway, after gathering the Lord's souls, you become powerful enough to travel to the Kiln of the First Flame and confront a burnt-up, hollowed Gwyn, now known as the Lord of Cinder. If you prevail, you're given a choice. Sacrifice yourself and rekindle the flame, once again preventing the Age of Darkness. Or, you can say screw it, turn your back on the dying flame, become the Dark Lord of Prophecy, and finally usher in the Age of Darkness. But here's the kicker, it doesn't really matter. Because if you rekindle the flame, it's only a temporary solution, as the fire will just start to dwindle again. This ultimately signals the return of the undead curse and repeats the cycle. If you turn your back on the fire, ushering in the Age of Darkness, the ashen embers will smolder, eventually reigniting when a new chosen undead rekindles the flame. This restarts the cycle in which the flame will eventually begin to dwindle again, and so on and so forth, forever and ever and ever and ever. In any case, enter Dark Souls 2! It suggests that thousands of years have passed, and many kingdoms have risen and fallen since your showdown with Gwyn in Dark Souls. One of those kingdoms, Drang Lake, was ruled by King Vendrick, who crushed the dragons residing there before erecting his kingdom. One day, a woman named Nishandra arrived from a far-off land. She warned him about the threat of giants across the ocean. Vendrick made Nishandra his queen, and she convinced him to head over there, conquer the giants, and steal a treasured prize from them. He returned victorious, prize in hand, and things were generally pretty good. For a time. Soon after his return, the undead curse began to spread, though no one knew what it was at the time. People began to go hollow, and the king and his followers began to hunt down the undead and purge them, while looking for a way to cleanse the curse. Vendrick soon realized that the only cure for the undead curse meant ascending the throne of want. He comes to the conclusion that Queen Nishandra was a real bad egg, manipulating him all along in order to get close to the throne. The king said nope, decided he didn't want any of that mess, and sealed the throne behind several barriers the queen couldn't penetrate. He then retreated to his crypt where he eventually went hollow, and it's all really sad. Meanwhile, the giants returned, supremely pissed off about the theft of their precious prize. They invade Drang Lake, and the ensuing war lasts for generations, leaving it in the broken, sorry state in which you find it. As the new chosen undead, you fight your way to Drang Lake and meet the helpful Queen Nishandra who befriends you, gives you advice, and generally points you in the right direction. Little do you know that the Queen is, surprise, manipulating you into breaking all the barriers to the Throne of Wands so she can get all up in there. Brave undead. You have proven yourself to me. Turns out, she's actually the human form of a small fragment of the soul of Manus, remember him, which was shattered when the chosen undead defeated him in Dark Souls. But it's okay. 
because all those trials and tribulations on the way to actually opening the throne have made you strong enough to defeat her, which you do. She dies and you're free to take the throne, or not. Either way, it probably doesn't matter, because all beginnings eventually end and all endings are followed by a new beginning. But that's for another time.